Hi, year five. This is uh, lesson one uh, through our journey through Lent. So because it's lesson one, we need to talk about the big question. Our big question uh, in this unit for this unit will be, can everyone be forgiven? It's a very important question, very difficult as well. So what I would like you to do is actually write down your um, your answer, your uh, spontaneous answer to this question. At the end of the unit, then I will ask you the big question again, obviously with all the teaching, and you will obviously answer the question. And maybe then we, you will compare, has your idea changed, you know, thanks to the teaching or, or has it stayed the same? Okay, um, there's not right or wrong answer here, um, but it's just important to see how maybe learning about Jesus uh, could actually make us um, think differently. I would like to apologize um, in advance because uh, recently I've had a few issues with internet. So at the top of the screen, sometimes there, are, there is like a black line or something where I suppose there was to be, um, you know, the, the, the words to be or the Oh, sorry, there used to be all the tools for me um, to move around for Zoom. Um, I apologize if it's there, but I can't do anything about it. <laughs> okay, having said that, let's move on with that lesson. So please jot down in your um, book your spontaneous answer to Can Everyone Be Forgiven? Okay. After that, I would like you to watch this video. Um, it does say with Lego because it's actually made with Lego. It's a bit of an alternative to um, our normal videos. That's a video about Lent. Um, hopefully that will refresh your memory um, about um, what happens in Lent. Okay, after watching the video, I would like you to stop for a second and uh, create as a, a spider diagram or use the template that I have included in the tapestry post. This is a spider diagram. So you will have Lent in the middle and then you have all these um, extra um, you know, boxes where you can write. Um, so after watching the video, I would like to jot down everything that you know about Lent, particularly focusing on the expectations um, on Catholics during Lent. So please pause the video here so you can complete uh, the activity. Um, once you have complete, um, completed the activity, please come back to um, this video. All right. So um, hopefully um, when you were watching the video, you have noticed these uh, three things. Um, if you haven't, that's fine. You can add them in, into your spider diagram, but I really wanted for you to have a go and see if you could actually manage to unpick these things yourself. So uh, three important things that are part of uh, Lent, there are three key elements of Lent for Catholics um, are fasting, prayer and alms giving. So remember alms, alms giving is actually giving to charity, you know, giving to others. Um, can you maybe, you know, write some ideas uh, for Catholic to um, achieve them? Would that could be, uh, could that be something that um, you could suggest uh, to other people, uh, either Catholic or people that are you know, interested into uh, the Catholic life, Catholic life. Um, so, as I said, first task was to um, write down in your spider diagram. Uh, the second task is just jot down a couple of suggestions of how we could uh, achieve these things. Again, for this one, you don't need any um, any template. You can just jot down a few um, lines to suggest um, some ideas. And after that, um, I would like you to actually write your own Lenten promises. Now, in our Lenten promises, uh, which are very similar to the Advent promises, aren't they? Uh, this is why we are using the color purple um, also during Lent, because we are preparing ourselves for something just like during Advent. But obviously, Lent is different. And I'm incredibly um although lots of people are get very very excited about christmas because obviously it's the birth of jesus but we do believe that easter is the moment where obviously we are finally aware 
of Jesus being the son of God because it's his resurrection. So again, it's a very important moment for us. So um, we live Lent as um, a moment of waiting and getting prepared um, for this special moment for us Catholics. So um, we write our Lenten promises. In our Lenten promises, we, we tend to uh, either give up something or take um, something um, on. Um, this year, as a school, we would like you to focus on your Lenten promises just on taking up something, taking something on. So instead of giving up the usual, you know, we always say, okay, give up PlayStation, give up chocolate. We don't want you to do that, okay? We just would like you to take something up. So it could be maybe doing some little picking or reading a parable of, um, from the Bible. Uh, obviously, maybe the children's Bible because they're a bit um, easier for you. Um, every evening or maybe say an extra prayer um or something like that or give maybe an extra phone call to your old auntie that maybe uh, would like to have a bit of company in the evening you know um, and your phone call could make her feel better or your uncle or something like that so please do not give up anything okay as a school we are not giving up anything we are going to take something up to take something on now um you will have in your pack um, a sheet with four crosses. Um, it's just one cross that we need for our tapestry post. However, obviously, it was easier just to put um, the sheet with four. And uh, obviously, it's good for you in case you make a little mistake or you change your mind or you want to decorate it or you want maybe a cross for yourself or one you know, to put in your room, one to put um, on your fridge. So please feel free to, um, you know, complete more um, and uh, obviously post one on tapestry. So this is your, um, well, let's say third task because you've got the spider diagram, a couple of ideas and then your Lenten promise. Oh dear, this is a very long lesson. I'm really sorry about this year uh, five. So um, obviously uh, we, we have to talk about forgiveness when we talk about um, Lent and Easter, because obviously Jesus died for us. And, so, um, and just because of Jesus' death, we have our sins forgiven by God. So um, it's important to think about the fact that uh, our sins are forgiven just really when we fully repent with a pure heart so we can't just do something again and again and again and just say oh sorry god sorry god that's not how it works um we really really have to repent okay we we can obviously make mistake you know again and again unfortunately but hopefully it's not going to be the same thing okay now when we talk about repentance and saying sorry, uh, what do we mean? How do we show this um, this repentance? How do we show show that we are really sorry? Um, whose footsteps should we follow? I think that should be quite straightforward. We have talked about that several time, uh, times, but I would like you to really think about this question. You don't need to write anything in this case, but it's just something that you need to have in your mind because... I would like you to then focus on something that we tend to do when we go to mass or if we're just going to church and sometimes you feel like, oh, I need to go to confession um, or I really need to say this to your God, uh, even if you're not really going to confession to your priest, but just really to confess to God as a private confession. So we often recite the act of contrition. I understand that not everybody, not everybody goes to church all the time or is mostly familiar with it. So I have included this uh, prayer here. So, oh my God, because you're so good, I am very sorry that I have sinned against you and with your help, I will try not to sin again. Amen. This is obviously a you know, simplified version of it. What are, what are the most important things in, in this prayer? Which one are the concepts that are important in this prayer? So we just said earlier is the fact that we are saying, with your help, I will try not to sin again. So obviously it's not easy for us because we are humans, but that's the important thing that we shouldn't be sinning again. At least we should really try not to make the same mistakes. 
Okay, so this is the uh, typical act of contrition. Um, but I would like you to write your own act of contrition. Now, we, you can, a um, couple of options. So you can either uh, work independently and you can just write task two if you want to um, on your book, or you can use the extra slides that are uh, under this, uh, after this slide. I'm gonna have a look at that in a second. If you do that, would you please write guided in your book? So we know, um, that you found uh, this, um, this activity a bit trickier. Uh, it's not a problem. <laughs> um, we are not you know, saying, oh, you know, that's so bad because you needed the support, but because that will be what we would be doing in class, isn't it? So um, it's not a problem at all, but just you know, for us to understand, uh, please put a little G or guided in your book. Okay, um, ideally, if you feel like you, uh, you really understand this, um, this uh, concept, um, you could try and make some links to um, Jesus' teaching and uh, his sacrifice for us, and maybe you know, link it to another parable, okay? This is your challenge. So, um, to recap the activities, so we have the little, uh, little spy, spider diagram, um, here, then we have a couple of ideas of how to do that, even for example saying fasting, okay, give up um, the meat for Friday, which is what we tend to do in Italy, <laughs> uh, during, uh, particularly during Lent, um, but that's an idea. Um, a prayer, okay, I can pray, or people could pray, maybe an extra prayer um, every evening or on a Saturday, something like that. Arms giving, okay, you could maybe donate your um, treats money or your pocket money, or adults could give up maybe their bottle of um, favorite drink and donate the money. So just a couple of sentences. So it shouldn't really take you too long. So please, please don't get <laughs> um, scared about all these um, tasks, but they're quite short. Uh, the ones that we really want you to um, focus on are particularly this one. So rewriting the act of contrition um, and the, the challenge, because you know, we, you know, we really like it for you to actually make links uh, to other parables and to uh, the Bible stories and everything we have learned from the Gospels. So if you feel that you are okay with this, uh, please stop the video now and start your work. <laughs> um, otherwise, let's continue together. So the extra support. Okay, so um, there are a couple of answers here, well, more than a couple, um, a few answers here that could help you um, with the question that we saw um, before. So what does repentance mean? So to re repentance, to regret and feel sorry for um, your actions. And so this is what um, repentance, the feeling of repentance is, to feel sorry, really, really regret, regret what you have done. Uh, when do we show repentance? Uh, when we apologize to someone we have injured and for Catholic, when they go to reconciliation. So reconciliation is when we go to confession to a priest. Okay. However, it starts in our heart when we actually really apologize for what we've done, just saying sorry, but really not caring uh, what's going on. Um, it's not really, you know, um, it's not really showing repentance. How do we repent? That's it. So show remorse, pray, give alms, ask for forgiveness, carry out a penance and live as God calls us to do. So for example, I know there's not exactly the same thing, but when sometimes there's an accident on the playground, what do I say? Um, you need to come to the person that you have hurt to me to tell me, oh, I'm really sorry. Um, by whatever reason, I managed to <laughs> hurt this person, kicking them, or you know, I just bumped into them or whatever. But the fact that you're coming with them to tell me, I'm really sorry, I've hurt this person, is showing me that you are really sorry because you're taking some time away from your um, free time to actually come and talk to an adult and say, I'm really sorry, and be genuinely um, you know, uh, upset by the fact that you've heard me showing that you are sorry. Okay, I'm appearing again. Ooh, I hope I'm still there. All right. So, because it was a very long one. <laughs> okay, so 
here. Uh, ideas to rewrite your actor contrition. So this is the actor contrition with a couple of um, images as well. So what you can change here could be, uh, for example, um, here it says, it says, oh my God, I am heartily sorry I ha um, for having offended you, uh, the means you, and I detest all my sins because of thy just punishments, but um, most of all because they offend thee, my God. Okay, so for example, you could um, say how you have offended God, okay? Um, what you know that you have done that has offended God. Um, you can, for example, instead of using the word detest, you can say how you're feeling um, for having offended a God. Um, then here is telling you, uh, sorry, I'm sorry because obviously I offended you, my God, who are all good and deserving of all my love. I firmly resolve with uh, the help of thy grace. So we thank you with you, um, with your help, thank, sorry, thanks to you, um, with your help, I will be able to not see, to see no more, so not to sin again, and avoid the near occasion of sin, and avoid to sin, in, you know, the possibility to sin again. So, um, how do, do you feel when you know that you have offended God, and how do you feel instead when you feel um, really loved by God? Okay, so you could maybe include these things in your act of contrition. Okay, so uh, hopefully this video has helped you. Uh, I hope that everything is there. Moment of panic, I basically disappeared and a completely different screen appeared. Um, uh, but if there's anything missing, please uh, send us a message and we will try to um, help you. You know, um, via, via message or I don't know, uh, any other form of communication we can use on the day. Um, thank you very much, Fi. Bye.